sister's little beaver scout. It's the Tom Likas Show. I love little beavers. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is a very, very important segment of our program. We do it only once every year. Every year, we aim to prove to you that drunk driving laws, while well-intentioned, are unsuccessful at getting drunk drivers off the road. Let me read to you from a press release. This is from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. It says here, Dateline... Omaha, Nebraska. The holiday season can be one of the deadliest and most dangerous times of the year due to an increase in impaired driving in December 2007. 992 people nationwide were killed in crashes that involved a drunk driver or motorcycle rider with a blood alcohol concentration of point zero eight or higher. In Nebraska, during the same time period, 21 fatalities occurred, two involving an impaired driver. That's why national, state, and local highway safety officials are joining forces to remind everyone who will be celebrating during the holidays that buzzed driving is drunk driving. And to never forget to plan a safe way home before the festivities begin. The press release goes on to say, the consumption of alcohol, drugs, and driving don't mix. Whether you've had way too many or just one too many, it's not worth the risk of killing yourself or someone else. Don't ever get behind the wheel of a vehicle when you are impaired. This is a press release from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. It continues. Following these easy steps, a driver can enjoy a safe and festive holiday without jeopardizing their life. Wouldn't it be his life? And the lives of the others who may be on the road. Here are the easy steps, bullet points. Plan a safe way home before the festivities begin. Does that mean to go where the cops aren't? Plan a safe way home? Okay. Before drinking, please designate a sober driver and give that person your keys. If you're impaired, use a taxi. Call a sober friend or family member. Or use public transportation so you are sure to get home safely. Use your community's sober rides program. If you happen to see a drunk driver on the road, don't hesitate to contact your local law enforcement. And remember, if you know someone who is about to drive or ride while impaired, take their keys and help them make other arrangements to get to where they're going safely. Saving lives on our roads is a top priority, so this holiday season, don't let your year end in arrest, or even worse, death. Make smart decisions. Plan ahead so you can assure a safe way home. By the way, I like the name of the woman you contact for more information. Ginny Vineyard. Fred Wino is off this week, so Ginny Vineyard is the person to call if you want more information. <laughs> is this an inside joke? What is that? Now, we have been doing this segment on our program now for at least 10 years, and I think it's more than that. Every year, I aim to prove that the drunk driving laws, while strict, are ineffective. And it doesn't take much to prove it. Besides all of the deaths, all of the debilitating injuries... The sad stories every holiday season about children who've been killed by drunk drivers. 
despite the public service announcements and all the money we spend on things like the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, with their PR person, Ginny Vineyard, despite all of that, there are drunks on our highways right now. Lots of them. And not only are there drunks on our highways, they are driving with reckless abandon, knowing they'll never be caught. The vast majority of them will never be caught. Uh, the public service announcements, while well-intentioned, are simply wrong. No matter how much of a crackdown they say there is, drunk drivers know what the authorities are afraid to admit. And that is that it is likely that most people won't get caught. And that's something, if you are a sober driver and you're worried about being injured, this is something you need to know. Do not feel comforted by all these uh, these commercials telling you that they're cracking down. Authorities are cracking down from coast to coast. You've heard that commercial, right? They're cracking down. And no matter what crackdowns there are, it's like, you know, the Border Patrol's been cracking down for years, and you know what a great job they've been doing. Now, as you know, this program is a big supporter of law enforcement, peace officers, specifically police officers, and uh, we know what a tough job they have. And nothing I say here should be taken to demean police officers. Quite the contrary. There are not enough police officers, especially right here where we live in Los Angeles. We need more of them. We need them all to be well-trained. We need them all to get the job done properly. We need to get rid of the bad apples when we find them. Because that's a very, very small fraction of the overall total. I'm a supporter of cops, always have been and always will be. I had cops in my family. And... Um, I know how tough it is when uh, they lose uh, one of their own. I, I feel for those families. I know what a tough job they have. And I know we have a tough city to police, too. Los Angeles, where I've lived for 21 years. Um, the police department uh, definitely has, uh, has their hands full. So uh, when I tell you that uh, they're cracking down, but, uh, you know, it's barely making a dent, understand... That's not an indictment of police officers. That's an indictment of something much bigger. We are in denial about drinking. We are in denial about drinking and driving. And we are in denial about how often it goes on. And we are in denial about wanting to do something about it. Because let's face it. If they wanted to do something about drunk driving, they'd have serious consequences. You wouldn't get... You ever see these stories where somebody got 11 DUIs? And now they're on trial for their 12th. <laughs> you know, if you really wanted to end drunk driving, you would not have a society where someone gets 11 DUIs or 4 DUIs or 16 DUIs. It wouldn't be happening. That person would be in prison for good. For good. Or for so many years that driving drunk or even driving anywhere wouldn't be that appealing anymore when they finally got out. We don't want to stop drunk driving. As a society, we want to continue generating revenue for the state, selling you alcohol education programs, charging you court fees, uh, charging uh, the, the attorneys charging fees to defend you. That's what it's all about. It's it's a big industry. That's what it is, and the government does not want to change it. You know, putting people in prison forever or for 20 or 30 years, that costs money. Why not turn it into a money-making operation? And that's what we've done. We've turned it into a big money-making operation. And everybody I know who's gotten nailed for DUI, they go to that alcohol re-education class where the teacher, frequently a recovering alcoholic, instead of teaching you that it's bad to drive drunk, says, well, you know what? Had you not driven in the passing lane with your windows wide open on a cold night, you never would have been caught. Next time you drive drunk, you should be in the right lane. Drive at a normal speed. On a cold night, keep your windows closed. I swear to you, 
More than one. First of all, we all know in California someone who's had a DUI. If you haven't had one yourself, we all know someone who's had one. And we all know these classes are a joke. They're a joke. But the state gets to charge you all this money to go to a class. Then they get to charge you to go to court. I mean, drunk driving is a profitable business for the state of California. And they're not going to change it. So I know the police officers who work so hard to catch these people, they know that what I say is true. And they know I'm on their side. <laughs> I'm not saying this to say cops aren't good at spotting drunk drivers or that, that cops don't know when someone's weaving in and out of traffic. Or they don't know, uh, you know when somebody looks like they're making bad decisions out there. They're trained. They know what to look for. They know what to do. But come on. The number of police officers we have... In most major American cities, do we have enough cops to get the job done? I'm going to prove to you we don't right now, the way I do every year. It's holiday season. Many of you have gone out and uh, partied. Maybe you've been to a company Christmas party. Maybe you've just been out uh, having happy hour with friends or, you know, you maybe you're going on vacation next week for the holiday and maybe you're going to be catching up with everyone this week. Or maybe you just drive drunk all the time. Maybe you just have a drink every day. I know there are people listening to me right now who are not three sheets to the wind. They're 33 sheets to the wind. People who are absolutely blasted. And driving right now. Some of you have booze right there in the cup holder of your car. And uh, Dean makes a good point here. We're not looking for people who smoke and weed. That's another show. Okay. I know some of you smoke weed. I know some of you do other drugs and drive. That's a whole other question. Right now, we're talking about beer, wine, and booze. We're talking about liquor. We have talked to people over the years who are calling me with a drink in their hands. We've talked to people over the years who stop off at the AMPM, put some ice in a in one of those uh, very large, uh, like forty four ounce drink cups, and just uh, you know start um, you know making uh, margaritas using those pre mixed margaritas or margarita mix in a you know, bottle of tequila in the car or people making pre mixed mojitos in the car. You know, I mean, I'm, we've we've heard the most amazing, amazing story. By the way, uh, since we last did this show, it is now illegal to use a cell phone unless you have a hands-free device. I'll bet you the people will not only call in with a cell phone. I'll bet you the people will call in while drinking and talking right into the cell phone. I, I can tell you right now because I've been doing this for a long time. So if you agree with me that the drunk driving laws are not getting the job done, if you agree with me that... California especially, but really every state in the Union has turned drunk driving into a cottage industry. If if you know the way I know that drinking and driving is something you're likely to get away with, if you are drinking and driving right now, I want you to call me from your cell phone right now at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Every year we talk to drunk drivers calling in from their cell phones. If that's you, call me. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, now with the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. That means more show. Bottom line. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And this hour, we talk to drunk drivers calling in from their cell phones. If you're drunk and you're driving, pick up the cell and call me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's do it. This is Dennis on the Tom Likas Show. Tom. Dennis. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm doing all right. 
I, I live in Portland, uh, but I'm working in Albany. It's like two hours drive away from my house at 80 miles an hour, 75, 80 miles an hour. So, and and today, I'm, I'm lucky to get 45, 50 miles an hour. You know, I got I bought a beer on, or a six pack of beers on the way home, and I mean, it, you know, it's a long drive. Now, now, all right. So you're in Oregon. Uh, so yeah, well, what you did you drink before you got in the car? No, I got off work. I got off work. I got my beers. I bought a six pack of beers at the store. You know, my uh, and, and I mean, I mean, it's like I said, it's going to be three hours by the time I get home. It's a long drive. I'm not going to wait that long to drink my beer. So uh, you're planning on drinking the entire six pack? Well, yeah, I'm. I, I got four of them done, I guess. But I, I'm, I'm doing all right. Now, let me ask you this, Dennis. If you drink through all six and you're not home yet, will you pull off and get more? No. No. That's it. Six is enough. I, did, I, did, I, I didn't figure I'd get through six of them by the time I get home. But it, like I said, it snowed yesterday, so it, it's kind of crazy. So you're, dri home. you're driving in snow and ice and you're drinking. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And how fast did you say you're normally driving? Um, I'm barely getting up to, uh, right now, I'm 33 miles an hour. 33 miles an hour. You'd like to drive yeah. faster. Is it the snow or is it the traffic? Uh, traffic. Traffic. And um, do you do this every day or just once in a while or just today? Well, how often do you do this? Well, every day since I've been working in Albany. How long has that been? I mean, it's a long drive. No, how long uh, have you been working in Albany? A couple of months. couple of months. So every day you get a six. By the way, my dad used to do that. My dad used to uh, drive with a carpool, and they'd get four sixers. And then uh, they'd toss the empty cans out the window. Well, yeah. I, yeah, that was, yeah, we don't do that no more. I just, gotta, I just put them back in the bag. So you see, the drunk driving laws have had an effect. You're not throwing the empty cans out the window anymore. No, well, no. I don't just, try to litter. Yeah. You just keep them in the car. Now, is it only beer? Do you ever drink other things in the car? No. Now, I got a buddy that keeps a bottle of uh, uh, pint of vodka underneath his seat, though. He does? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, drink, he drinks it straight? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And, uh, of course, I imagine once in a while you stop off for one on the way home, do you? Yeah, sometimes. One or two? Yeah. I I try not to do it so much anymore. I, I mean, I got a DUI last year. Oh, you got a DUI so, last year. So now you've yeah. cut back, and it's only a six-pack to drive I, the two hours from Portland to Albany. Oh, yeah. I made, I made it through the program and everything, and I, I stayed pretty good for a while. But, I mean, on these long drives, it's hard to do. Tell me about the program. What program were you in? Uh, they make you go through this uh, diversion. I guess okay. the first time you do, first time you get one, you get to go through diversion, and then it doesn't. It stays on your record for like ten years, but it doesn't. It's sort of off your record. I don't know how it works exactly, but I got to do diversion. So you had to, you had to go, you had to go to like alcohol reeducation class or something. Right. Yeah, like six months of that. And what do they what do they teach you in there? Cost like five thousand dollars by the time I was all done. Well, too. that's what I was saying. That's why they do it because they make a lot of money on that stuff. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And, and did they give you any helpful tips? Uh no, not really. I mean, uh, they they give you a little bit of education about what alcohol does, but you know, I I learned a little bit, but not not too much really. Uh, well, uh, uh, did they tell you uh, not to drink and drive? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and so now you got a six pack, and you could you cut back. All right, I cut. Back. You're right, right. Mm. I cut back. If I got pulled over right now, I, I'd probably be in trouble. But I'm driving just fine, and and likely I'm not going to get pulled over unless I got a tail light out or something. How'd you get pulled over the first time? I hit a fence. Oh, you hit a fence. <laughs> yeah, my my uh. I, sl I slid through a stop sign and hit a fence. Now, what would you do if you slid through a stop sign and you hit a little girl? I know. I know. They they, they educate you on all that stuff, too. They do. But, 
And, and so you went out and got a sixer. Yeah, I was really lit at that time. Yeah. I don't do that no more. So this time it's just, you're just going to drink four to six cans of beer on the way home, but that's right. it. Right. You're drawing the line. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Dennis, thank you for that. All right. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. <laughs> Love those DUI laws. They're really getting the job done, huh? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thou hurt six days a week. Hear our show every Saturday from 2 until 6 on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. And uh, those of you who uh, don't listen on the air, you can pick us up online on Saturday by going to blowmeuptom.com and clicking on the Listen Live button. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking to drunk drivers calling from their cell phones and because it's the holiday season, of course. Let's say hello here to um, mm, Matt. Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Buddy? I'm doing great. Yeah, you know this. I I know the point you're trying to get across, and I'll tell you, there's some people that just don't learn that have that are alcoholics, and and I'm one of them, and I'm a functional one. And um, after work, I definitely have to have a pint of rum, and I just take a coke with me, and then you know slam slam a couple shots here and drink with it. So you have a pint of rum every night. Oh, yeah. Now, what kind of rum do you drink? Is it Bacardi or Captain Morgan? What do you drink? Bacardi Silver. Bacardi Silver. Yeah. All right. So, you know, I mean, I make over six figures, you know, but I, I just came from there. I just moved out here from uh, Arizona where uh, back about six, seven years ago, I did get a DUI. And uh, I ended up in Tent City, and it sucked, man. Absolutely sucked. So you've already been in jail? Uh, yeah, I've been in jail a couple times for just being stupid drunk but uh one dui and uh i did tent city you know which uh joe arpaio is famous for yeah and, joe arpaio uh, is the sheriff in maricopa county and uh the tent city is a literally a tent city located in the uh, dry bed of the salt river right with uh mice jumping around your bed every night you know uh-huh so, you know, you go from a nice half million dollar house to you know that that should that should teach you right but sometimes people don't get taught the right way. So I, you know, I I don't know what it's going to take. You know, I, it's just one of those things. But it just kind of calls my nerves on the way home. And then uh, I get there and, you know, I'm hoping I'm not, I, I don't get too uh, messed up. Wow. Now, Matt, let me ask you another question here. Uh, you're, you're, you're driving home, you got Bacardi Silver. Do you drink it out of the bottle? Do you hide it in a cup? What do you do with it? No, I got a, I got a bottle of it, and I just kind of like make sure nobody's paying attention. My windows are pretty tinted, and driving at night, and I just take a quick chug and then take a sip of the Pepsi that I carry with me to chase it. I see. So you don't mix it with the Pepsi, like make a rum and Pepsi. You you drink yeah, the I, rum. I've, I've done both. You have. Yeah. All right. And uh, you you already went through the whole system. You. Uh, you not only went to the the tent city jail, you uh, you also, I imagine, went to alcohol reeducation classes and things like that. Uh, a few a few times for fighting and stuff like that while I was drunk too. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. So yeah, I mean, it's a joke. I mean, it, the total thing's a joke. It's all about money. It's how much money they want, and I and everybody in the class knows that. Half the people that even show up at the class show up drunk. Now, Matt, let me ask you a question. Are you doing this every night? It's five nights a week. You drive home from work, and you've got a bottle of rum in the car with you? Pretty close. And do you drink before you get in the car, too? No. No. So the whole thing is... And uh, what do you do? Do you stock up on these? Like, do you go to Costco and get, like, uh, you know, 20, uh, 20 small bottles for the month? So you got one for every no, day? No, no. I just, I just go out, like, at noon, at lunchtime, pick it up, put it in the car, put the drive home. Hang on a second, Matt. Hey, Dan, what do you think about what uh, Matt is telling us here? Yeah, um, basically, you know, I'm a police officer. I work L.A. Um, I can tell you that most officers, uh, especially the patrol side of it, are not motivated to even make a DUI arrest. For every three uh, people we stop, 
only one is actually getting arrested for DUI. The average police officer, uh, patrol officer out there, uh, doesn't have the training to detect DUI, and most of the DUI drivers that are actually arresting, that one out of three, uh, their BAC levels are .15 or above. Anything below that is usually a traffic officer like a motor cop or it's a DRE, a drug recognition expert, uh, that's, that's popping DUI drivers at .0908, uh, .10%. But most patrol officers are arresting the DUI suspects at .15 or above. Right. No, so and, and, so then, and, then Matt is right. How much risk is he taking? Uh, you know, the average is uh, if he goes out drinking and driving, uh, he's got a 1 in 2,000 chance of being arrested. That, well, that's a very different story from what the public service announcements tell us. Yeah, they're not going to tell you that. That's something I learned in uh, DRE school. It's a drug rec recognition school. It's a two-week school that an officer goes to. And then uh, we have a year of training t uh, to detect someone under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. And they tell us the statistics on drunk drivers. And basically, it's you have a 1 in 2,000 chance. You go to a bar, you get drunk, and you leave from the bar. You have a 1 in 2,000 chance of actually being arrested for DUI. How's that feel, Matt? No, I, I, no, I mean, I understand. I mean, as many times as I've done it, I know the odds of what the odds are of getting caught. But it's still, I'm still paranoid about it, and I'm, I'm not proud of it. I'm not trying to say it's something everybody should go out and do. I'm saying, you know, basically, I've got, I've got issues. I've got internal issues. I got to deal with. I got demons I'm facing. So, but I, I try to get away from them by doing this, and it's, it's totally wrong. I, I don't recommend it. I, I don't think it's right. And I know I'm, what I'm doing is completely wrong. And. I see your point on this, and when I heard that, when I turned you on, which I do every time I come home, I was like, maybe this is a come to Jesus for me. Wow. Well, uh, Matt, thank you very much for calling in and for being honest with us, and uh, Dan, thank you as well. No problem. Appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking to drunk drivers calling in from their cell phones. Let's say hello here to Marty in Portland, Oregon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's um, Marty's wife. And here, I'll give you, I'll give the drunk driver the phone. All right. Here he is. Okay. Hey, what's up? Not much. So your wife is a big supporter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number one fan. Does she hold your drink for you while you drive? No, I keep it in the console, but she refills it. You keep it in the console? Well, yeah. Where, so do you have a cup holder, or do you keep it inside the glove compartment? Where do you keep it? No, it's a cup holder. you got to make a drink. you got to be incognito, you know? I see. So you, she mixes the drinks for you? Well, and you need a refill, yeah, depending on the uh, length of the trip, you know? So what are you drinking right now? Well, just the usual rum and Cokes, Diet what? Coke. Rum and Diet Coke? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to don't want to add any carbs if you well, don't you have know, to. Here in Portland, it's snowy, and in case we get Portland. stranded, we need to uh, make sure we're prepared. Don't have our blankets, but we got our rum. How far a drive do you have? Oh, no more than you know, an hour at the most. So nothing major, but just you know. an hour, just an hour drive. Yeah, and you not got, like it's the first time. Do you have a bottle of rum there? How do you do this? Well, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, because sometimes you see these pre-mixed drinks. I, I thought maybe uh, that'd be perfect for a drunk driver, you know, to pick nah, up some of those nah, Kentucky the taste Cola. Are still intact. You need some. Still need the goods. You know, you keep everything fresh. Keep bring your bottle of rum with you. Bring your diet coke and a glass of uh, ice here and there. So that's all. So there you are. You've got your. Uh, by the way, what's, what's your uh, preferred brand? What are you drinking? Oh, Bacardi by choice. A little Bacardi, yeah. a little diet coke. And your yeah, wife no is drink. and your wife is sitting in the passenger seat mixing them up for you. Oh yeah. Any ice? Well, you have to have ice, otherwise it's yeah. So where do you get the ice? Um. Well, sometimes you stop by your house here or there, or go to McDonald's. Oh, there's McDonald's. a product placement, so uh -huh. wherever. Yeah, okay. you don't want to give you a cup of ice. You know, you need cigarettes too, so you know. All right. And uh, is your wife always in the car with you, or just today? Oh, not always. Just at the moment, we're in the holiday spirit, so we're thinking about giving. So, see so where we end up. So you're in the holiday spirit. So you're driving around making rum and cokes. Yeah. So see that we drink in the car, or drink at home. No big deal. Here we go, wassailing. <laughs> yeah. 
people. Are you drinking out of a wassail? Oh, no. Okay. Now I got a plastic cup incognito. I see. So what do you do? You get like one of those fast food cups and you put ice in it and... Yeah, here or there, however long they last or whatever. Right. Props up. No big deal. And uh, how often do you do this? <laughs> yeah. Well, I got an excuse. I'm a high-rise window cleaner, so it's... We drink every day. You drink so. every day? Do you drink when you go up? <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Before, during, and after. Really? Yeah. So. Wait a minute. You're a high-rise window cleaner, and you drink when you're going up the side of a building. Oh, only in a stage, but not when you go from the top to the bottom. But you drink before you go up. Oh, depends on how cold it is. Oh, my. Now, yeah. this, this road you're on, are you on a freeway? Oh, side street. You're on a side street. And oh, yeah. uh, snow, ice, uh, how's oh, the road? There's plenty of ice and snow. But like I said, you know, not the first time. So yeah. in a Jeep, it's all good. Uh huh. And is rum and coke your preferred drink? Do you drink other things? Ah, uh, preferred drink. So it's always rum and coke. Pretty dang much. That really? way I know what to expect. Well, I see. Now, aren't you worried about getting caught? Well, you know what? <laughs> the law doesn't do their job because there's plenty of times I should have been pulled over and they haven't been there. So due to the circumstance, yep. Knock on wood, it's the way it's been, everything's good. So. Really? Yeah. Hang on Just a like second. like you, I'm sure, you know. No different. Well, hang Well, I've, I've never had uh, my girlfriend or my wife sit in the front seat mixing rum and cokes for me. I'll tell you right now, that I've huh. never done. Well, maybe someday. You haven't been married long enough, maybe. Huh? <laughs> oh, now we know I know, know you've been married, but... <laughs> now, uh, that, so. that, then you need rum and coke at home. That's... Sometimes, man, hey... Now, hang Whatever. on a second, Marty. Let me get Mark on here. Mark, what do you think about Marty? I think it's pretty interesting. It's uh, I lost a cousin, and I've lost six friends to drinking and driving, two of whom were drinking and uh, took themselves out. And I think, you know, granted, law enforcement can't catch all of these people. It's impossible. But I think it's great that your listeners what? understand who they're sharing on the road with because these guys are out on the road every night, I mean, more so this season. But this is who's out on the road every night. That's a lot more of it out there than I thought. Well, there's way more than you thought. And obviously, the average intelligence of the people that are out there doing it is pretty low, which is what you'd expect. Um, and the fact that they haven't got caught is great. I would just be curious, as you talk to these people that are drinking, how many of them have lost a friend or have lost a family member to someone who is drinking and driving? Well, Marty, why don't, why don't you tell Mark? Have you ever uh, lost anybody to drunk driving? Oh, it's all on the delay thing. Yeah, you have to keep the radio turned off, dear, because uh, we are in delay, yes. Okay. What am I saying about the average intelligence stuff? <laughs> I just wanted to say something to Tom. Uh, what is your name? My name's Julie. I'm, gra I'm, I'm Marty's... Um, all right. Did you hear what Mark just said? Mark wanted. Mark was curious about whether you'd ever lost anybody to drug driving, like a friend or a neighbor. No, or anyone. you know, I've lost a lot of people to cancer, and um, but not to drunk driving. No. Well, that's almost. It's the same thing: cancer, drinking, and driving. Yeah, I, and I know it's really bad, but I've been. I know I'm not in your demographic because I'm 47. I'm really hot, but I'm 47, and so I know I'm not in your demographic, but I also know that I've been drinking and driving for 20 years and have never been pulled over. But I, you know... And you sound pretty proud of that. Well, no, I'm not at all. No, I'm not proud of it at all. I let, me ask, let, me ask, let me ask you a stupid question with Mark on the phone here. Uh, why do you do it? Um... Why do I do it? Um, gosh, just, I guess, uh, to get the way I was raised and to get through the day. And I work, and I I work really hard. I, I'm a caregiver for people, and um, I really watch what I do, but um, I I, I'm not crazy. proud of it at all in any way I wouldn't want I have two I have four children I have two of my own and two stepchildren and I would not want them to do it you wouldn't well, want them to do because, it that's great Tom because when she puts herself through the windshield she has caregivers in her family who can take care of her yeah I know it's it's really bad I know 
but yeah, well, let me ask you this question: If it's really bad, why Who don't am I you? St- to? Is this, this is or? this is Tom right here. If this, it, it's this is Tom. Okay, Tom. I'm sorry. I I'm asking you a question. I didn't recognize your voice. Well, because there's also the that, because there's also Mark on the phone who was calling in, and he's the one who's lost several family members and and friends to drunk drivers. Oh. Uh, all right, but here's my question for you: If you know it's really bad, and you have children, why do you keep yes. doing? Um, gosh, uh, I guess it's just how I get through the day, and I'm just so used to it. I've been doing it for so many years, but I haven't um, ever like I haven't ever lost a family member to drunk driving. I guess maybe that would make a difference, which I hate to say that, but. How about if how about if somebody who made the same choice that you did hit your car out hit your car and took out two of your kids? All they're doing is what you're doing. They just decided it's okay to drive. In 25 years, they've never been got caught. And the one night that you're out with your kids in the back of the car, they drunk run a red light and kill a couple of your kids. That's okay, right? They're, that's okay. They're just out driving around, drinking, having a good time like you are. No worries. Right. So it should be okay. Everybody should be able to do that. And the fact that they're putting you and your kids' lives in danger, that shouldn't bother you at all because you've been doing it for so long. It's just cool. When you go to when you go home tonight, when you go to kids, figure out what would like them to go in bed without their mother. Wrap yourself in. Yeah. I, oh, I, I, I absolutely know you're right. Well, there you have it. I absolutely do. Once again, advertisers, you can reach this prime demographic. Absolutely. Tom like is. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. And we are talking to drunk drivers. Calling in from their cell phones. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up? Not much. Oh, I like to drink and drive my truck. What kind of truck do you drive? An 18-wheeler. You drive an 18-wheeler? Yes. And what do you drink as you're driving an 18-wheeler? I uh, usually drink Jack and Coke. I just mix it in a regular cup, you know, make it look like a soda. So you take, like, one of those big gulps or, like, a 44-ouncer? Yeah. yeah. You put ice in it? Yep. And what do you do? You buy a Coke and then you add Jack Daniels to it, or you what do you do? No. Sometimes I do that, or sometimes, like, if it's a restaurant cup, you know, there's a little soda left, I put some Jack and Coke on it. Just keep driving like if it's a soda, you know? And is that the only thing you drink? Oh, I'm... Sometimes Budweiser, too. I keep on my refrigerator or my ice chest, you know. Really? Yeah. And i only been caught twice, and I already got my license back. So. Well, only twice? Yeah. So like they, let say, me understand this. They took your license away. How long did they take it away for? Only for like a year. Then uh, A year? So yeah, What does a truck driver do with no license for a year? What would you do? Oh, I just went back to warehouse, you know. Back to the minute. warehouse. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, so you got your license back. And how long after you got your license back were you in the front seat of your rig uh, drinking Jack and Cokes? Um, probably like six months after, after, you know, I got a little more courage. So but you, I got caught in a car, though, you know. I didn't get caught in the truck. So you waited six months, and then you put the Jack and Coke back in the, back in the rig. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you're not worried about getting caught. I mean, I don't want to get caught, but it's like on a truck, it's kind of rare because they don't really mess with you. Really? I would think they would pull you over and just ask you questions about the truck, but no? Nah, as long as you keep it steady, they don't even pull you over like if they would in a car, you know? Really? Well, from my experience. Now, are you able to keep that truck straight? Do you ever weave even uh, a little bit? Come on, a little uh, bit? I'm, I'm thinking it's straight. Who knows if it's... Yep. Out of the road, you ever hear you know? those road? <laughs> the, you ever hear the sound of those road strips under your under your vehicle? No, nothing like that. Okay, just checking. <laughs> well, you? and um, 
have you had uh, uh, the cops try to stop you for other things like speeding or anything and you had oh, to nah. hide your drink? Nah. No? Never, you know. Only when I'm in my car, you know. But in a truck, never get pulled over for anything. Now, what would happen to you or job if you got caught uh, drinking and driving a 18 wheeler? Oh, I get fired immediately, but maybe in another year or two, I just get my license back and apply somewhere else. And you're not worried about it? Nah. Now, are you, so you have no concerns about this at all? Do you have, a, do you have kids? Nope. No kids, no wife? Nope. Nothing like that. Paid off house and all that, so pretty much I got money to survive for another year or two. And that's all you're concerned about? Yep. Okay. Mike, thank, and thank you for that. All right, thanks. Appreciate the call. There goes Mike. Jack and Coke in his rig, sometimes the Budweiser. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Scott in Portland, Oregon on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, Scott. Hey, I was just calling in because I was listening to your show about uh, everyone driving drunk. And I'd like to say to the last guy who was uh, talking about have you had any family members killed, I uh, lost my mom, my grandma, and my sister. Uh, on one wreck, and that's why I choose to drink. That's um, why. That's why you drink and drive. Well, it, yeah, to help uh, numb the pain, and, and I really could care less. Um, I look at it; it's kind of like herpes. You know, the person gave you herpes, didn't give two craps, but to, you know, to let you know what they had, and uh, yeah. So I, I drive truck. I've been driving truck. 12 years out of DUI uh, about 13 years ago and yeah DUI uh, the diversion program it doesn't help you it's it's designed to hit you in the pocketbook wow and uh, so who'd you lose again I lost my grandma my mom and my sister and, so, on, uh, and so now you drive drunk as a result well I, I'm I, I don't have any problem saying that I am a drunk um, so I, I pretty much drink, and if I have to get home, I drive. Unbelievable. It's the Tom Likas Show.